For years, the standard age to retire, it seemed like it was 65. Perhaps that was because full retirement age for Social Security was age 65. Medicare started at age 65. So they kind of seem to go hand in hand. But now the full retirement age has moved to age 67. And I'm seeing more and more people wanting to retire early, maybe at age 50 or 55 or 60. And if you are wanting to retire early, there's a lot to consider here. My name is Keith Wilson. I'm a financial advisor helping folks just like you with their retirement planning. And in this video, I will be giving you some tips and things to think about if you plan to retire early. Lightning strikes and then you're going to know my name. Hey, look, retiring early, it can be achieved with proper planning. And a lot of people I meet with that have a goal of retiring early, what they'll do, they'll come with me to me with an amount they think they need saved up in order to retire. And some folks will just say, oh, if I just had $1 million or some other amount saved up, then I can retire. Well, I, I think that is not the way to look at it. You, you really need to start figuring out what income you will need in retirement. Now, to figure that out, I would start with what is your current living expenses? Not your income, but what does it take for you to pay the power bill, groceries, gas, eating out, and just normal shopping. Don't count debt payments like mortgages, loans, credit card debt, and don't count what you are currently saving in your 401k or other investments because when you retire, you won't be contributing to a 401k and you shouldn't have any debt. So once you arrive at that figure, I would add to it to account for the lifestyle spending you would have each month. Think about your hobbies and things you want to do in retirement. Maybe you will be playing more golf or tennis each week or traveling each month. Now that you have that figure, we need to move to the next step, which is where is the money going to come from. So think about this. The earliest you can collect Social Security benefits is age 62. So if you retire before 62, then you will have to rely on your investments and your savings. Now, preferably, you would want to have three types of accounts at your disposal to pull from. A taxable or brokerage account, a tax-deferred account, like a 401k or IRA, and a tax-free account, like a Roth IRA. Now, this is important because if you will be drawing off of these accounts to live on, they are taxed differently. So if you are under age 59 and a half and withdraw money from your 401k or IRA, then there would be a 10% penalty and you would pay tax on the whole amount. Now, when it comes to withdrawing money from your accounts for income, typically I recommend drawing from the taxable or brokerage account first. And this is because there's no 10% penalty and it would be taxed at capital gains tax rate on any gains realized, which is lower than ordinary income tax rate. But what if all your retirement savings is in a 401k and you need to withdraw from it before age 59 and a half? Well, before we answer that, why not take some time to subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up, it helps get this information out there, and I would really appreciate it. Okay, a couple of ideas here. One is the rule of 55. The rule of 55 works like this. In the year of you turning 55 or later and leaving your employer, you can access monies from your 401k without incurring the 10% penalty, and there is no limit of what you can pull out. The caveat is it must be from your current employer plan. Now, if you have an old 401k plan, 
it doesn't work. Now, you would still pay taxes on the amount withdrawn, but you would avoid the 10% penalty. Look, there's more to it than that. So check out this video I posted on the rule of 55 right up here. You could also use the 72T rule to access money from your 401k or IRA before age 59 and a half without the 10% penalty. If you take substantially equal periodic payments over five years, then the 10% penalty is waived. There are IRS calculations for this. So get with your financial advisor or your tax professional before implementing this strategy. So the idea of your withdrawal strategy is what you're doing is bridging the gap uh, between when you retire and when social security benefits and perhaps pensions will be available. Now the question would be, what is a sustainable rate to withdraw. And many planners like myself will refer to the 4% rule on this. So by withdrawing 4% of the account value in year one and adjusting for inflation, then the risk of running out of money, it's pretty negligible. But this could be different for you. You may need to withdraw more than that 4% until Social Security kicks in. Listen, everyone is going to be different. Now, there is software out there that you can run to give you simulations of what your degree of success would be. This is where we get to what your number is. For example, if you require $6,000 a month in retirement and follow the 4% rule, then multiply the annual amount needed, 72000 by 25, which is $1.8 million. However, I would say this could be adjusted because maybe your withdrawal rate will be higher in the earlier years and then adjusted downward once Social Security or pension kicks in. And that's where you really need to either get with a financial advisor or run the calculations yourself. All right, next you should strive to be debt-free in retirement. I mean, get the house paid off, no credit card debt or other loans. And this will free up extra cash flow because the last thing you need is debt in retirement. After all, you want to enjoy yourself in retirement and not be encumbered with the debt. The next thing to consider if you want to retire early is health insurance. How will you maintain your health insurance. And here are some options to consider. First, if your spouse would still be working, you could piggyback on their coverage. But what if both you and your spouse retire early? Then look into your employer group coverage. Do they offer continuation of coverage? Some employer plans will cover you even after you retire up you know, up until Medicare age. Hey, if that's not an option, look into the marketplace plans. You may qualify for a subsidy, especially if you will be living off your brokerage account that would be taxed at capital gains tax rate and not your ordinary income tax rate. Also check out an HSA. If you had an HSA account with your employer before you retired, then you could use that coupled with a high deductible health insurance plan just to bridge the gap to Medicare. And this, this could really lower your health insurance premiums. Or what about, you know, just picking up a part-time job that offers health insurance? Look, many well-known companies offer health insurance to part-time workers. The next thing to consider if you want to retire early is to have a couple of years of the income you will need in retirement saved up in cash. And that way you could withdraw from that instead of tapping into your investments. And this could avoid what is called the sequence of returns risk. So think about it. If in the year you retire, the market... Psh, 
drops, declines, and you're withdrawing from your investments, then that's a double whammy. So by withdrawing from that savings account first, it could give your investments time to recover. Now, speaking of investments, look at how your portfolio is allocated. Now is not the time to have speculative investments. You may want to consider reallocating the portfolio that would be more in line with not only your risk tolerance, but also your risk capacity. Hey, look, early retirement is certainly a bold financial goal, but it can be accomplished with the proper planning. And hopefully these tips can help you, you know, get on that path towards your goals And if we need to talk about your particular situation, check out the resources below. And until then, we'll see you next time.